I haven't got to fly from show to show yet uh -huh. on my plane. Yeah. I was going to do it, and then I realized that my, my buddy that's my instructor, he was getting back from, uh, uh, where was he? He was in Dublin. Uh -huh. He was flying. He flies for Delta. He was coming back. And um, I was like, well, man, you'll be back in time to fly your girlfriend up if you want to go to the show because we share the plane. Uh -huh. He's like, yeah, I'll do that. So it kind of canceled my adventure of doing three shows in a weekend myself. But Yeah. I was like, yeah, it. I'd feel bad if, you know. We, I ended up flying us home from that last show. Cool. Kind of got to behave yourself, too, though. You, know? you have yeah. to. No yeah. doubt about it. I was going to, you know, it, it made sense. I can't imagine playing the show, going to get the plane ready, flying to the next city, then going to bed. So I was going to stay stay after the show mm -hmm. and then wake up the next morning and go. Mm -hmm. It was my plan. My dad, all, I mean, he said, hey, Kix, I got no problem with you getting an airplane. He goes, but you ain't going to fly it, okay? <laughs> well, I, I said for years I was not going to fly my a plane either, but uh -huh. here I am yeah, loving it, you know? And what really inspired you to get your license or whatever? I had a buddy that we were uh, at a hunt and lease down in Texas, mm -hmm. and he fly, he's in the middle of nowhere Minnesota farmer, mm -hmm. and it would take me all day to get to the hunt and lease, and it mm -hmm. would take him two hours. So mm -hmm. I was just asking, I'm like, man, when did it start making sense to fly yourself? He goes, well, money-wise, it never does. <laughs> <laughs> right. like, you know, yeah. Financially, not a great move, but yeah. freedom-wise, yeah, it's awesome. And this was in uh, 2021 when we weren't touring a whole lot, you yeah. know, and and he just kept bugging me, man. Like every week, he'd call me. Did you go? Yeah. Did you go? Go? Because I'd never been in a small plane. Mm. Did you go, go check check it out? You know, and he kept bugging me, bugging me. Finally, he goes, "Okay, I'm sending you one of my planes, and you're learning how to fly this thing." End cool. of story. And I'm like, I can't turn down that offer. Yeah, it's so off to the races. Oh, right. that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, would you? You got a Cirrus? Or got a Cirrus? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I got that. Got Probably the old... Dirks and Tam. Have you kind of half inspired? Did you talk talk to them about? Yeah, I have. That? Yeah, Dirks. He checks in every now and again. Mm -hmm. You know, I've uh, leased his plane a couple of times, and yeah. And I took some lessons. Bird Burton, who you may not remember, amazing rhythm ace, as you probably heard of. Yeah. And Bird was a lead guitar player in that band. But he was also he had, he had his jet pilot license. Oh, that's awesome. But he was the house engineer at Tree too. You know, and even when Ronnie and I got started, he played steel in our band for oh, wow. quite a while. Yeah, when we were first getting going, dude's a madman. He got yeah, he was great. Got sick of us. We lost him a while back, but <laughs> but I did. I took some lessons with him. You know, in the 172 or something. Yeah. And and did I got like a feel for. It? I loved it. You know, but it's just I know me well enough to know keeping up with that was never gonna happen. I've got a buddy. Yeah, and I didn't realize how much you got to keep up with mm -hmm. it. It is a lot, but I've yeah. got a buddy same way. He would love to do it, but he's like, man, I just get in a hurry, and I'm gonna skip a step. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that you can't do. You yeah. just got to same yeah. same thing every time. Yeah, I'm, I am the guy that left four. Five pieces out of his model airplane. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just good. <laughs> it looks good to me. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> There's a difference. Uh, I know. There's I know. a difference. So uh, I heard you say, girlfriend, I'm not going to get all into your private life here. But <laughs> but um, I did read somewhere in one of your bio clips or something uh, that you, and you may not have said this, which I know how bio clips go to, that this is somewhat of a, crossroads time for you between do you want to be serious about having a family and all that yeah. or do you want to just keep rocking on a little bit and see how things go do you feel that way right that's now? it yeah i was kind of just paying attention to my inner conversations you know as this album process was going a lot of that time when i'm thinking about songs and and what kind of album i was wanting to make mm -hmm. um is when i'm on, on my tractor working on the farm solo mm -hmm. you know, there's the alone time mm -hmm. and i realized i'm like hold up I keep kind of having the same conversation of what's the best version of me. Mm -hmm. you know, do I need someone else? Am I missing out? Have I not prioritized enough time mm -hmm. to allow myself to find somebody mm -hmm. um, as of recent? But then at the same time, not having to check in and the freedom of just being able to say yes to any adventure that comes my way mm -hmm. is also awesome. And mm -hmm. I know that's not wrong. Yeah. So I'm still trying to figure out, I think as I talk about this album and start promoting it, um, I'm getting my answers, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, but I don't know. It's a journey. It's a journey that I'm excited to kind of recognize and put out there publicly. And, and usually when I do that, um, you know, answers start falling into place. Think age has anything to do with it? Probably so mm -hmm. without a doubt. And I Is, know, I know age does because, you know, how old are you? 38. There's yeah. pressure from, um, 
not not direct pressure, but I know my fa- my parents would love you know me to find somebody. Of course, they're mm-hmm. worried about me not having. Oh yeah, somebody in my life. I have this conversation with Chesney all the time. It's yeah. like my mom would love it. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a brain I need to pick. It's Chesney's. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to, I need to get his side of the story. Um, and but then my friend circle too. You know, a lot of my buddies went on to get married, and they're now. I mean, five of my close friends have gone through divorce in the past couple mm-hmm. of years, so they're back in my boat. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. we thought they had it figured out, and I was screwed up. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. It's all. It all boils down to the woman. Yeah, it does. And yeah. people, I've, we just celebrated me and Barbara forty-two years. Congrats! And people all the time. So what's the secret? I go. The secret is independence. Yeah. And all the things that you just said could not be more true. Mm-hmm. Because I've and I can promise you, all my friends said I was the last one that would ever get married. You know, I mean, I was rocking wild. Before I got married, I was rocking wild, real wild at my wedding. I uh, <laughs> almost missed it. Yeah. Watched the sun come up with Jody Williams, went water skiing, and ran I out of gas it. on the lake, you know. I love it. With Barbara on her way to the altar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the true, literally <laughs> and, the true hangover yeah, movie. <laughs> no kidding. And that's the truth. And But it's always been that way. And she she had horses. You know, when I was on tour, yeah. she's pulling a nine-horse trailer wearing spurs to Kroger, you know. And I love it. You just – it's so important, I think, to have someone that's not totally codependent on you and has to do it all with you. you got to have somebody you can share your life with. Yeah. I'm not saying we never see each other because we do, and we've had a great relationship. But – We've given each other plenty of time yeah. to ourselves. That's great advice. And, yeah. Great I th- advice. I think it I really do think it's a secret. Some people may do everything and live their whole lives together and whatever, but um man, I'm just I'm not geared that way. I could have never made it that way. Yeah. And you can't go the distance without expecting uh everything not to be rosy. Yeah. You know. Oh for sure. But life's that way too. You know. I mean your record company everything you're gonna have there's gonna be wars in your life and those are the times that challenge you that make life interesting you oh know? no doubt so what the heck no doubt yeah it's it's a fun journey I, I think i'm far enough along now in my career which which is good to know how i i think like my life to be structured mm-hmm. and, and the the way i operate best professionally mm-hmm. you know and, and right now that's that's really cherishing my time off mm-hmm. and being off mm-hmm. so I, I've, I've realized that i've got to find somebody um, through past relationships that allows me to be that, you know, because it's mm-hmm. important, I think, for my mental health to kind of be able to turn off and just go disappear on the farm for a bit. You had, without mentioning any names, is there, if you had in the past going, might have missed that one. Could have oh, yeah. been the one. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. But um, sometimes those things come back around too, you know? Yeah. Um. But I've also thought I've had it, and you know, it it definitely not be the right answer too. So. Yeah, I tee up on people <laughs> tell me I can't write heartbreak songs being married this long. I go, you know, I was twenty six when I got married. I don't even know how many girlfriends I had at that point. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there is something about heartbreak though I, that still I, I fell in love all the time. Yeah, there's there's something about heartbreak that for me I hear lyrics differently whenever I'm going through it. You mm-hmm. know. I'm into somebody and it doesn't work out or, you know, for whatever that road comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Um, as a songwriter, mm-hmm. man, I get, I get a, geared up and, and ready to rock. And, and it seems like the ideas start to flow a lot. Mm-hmm. So I think let myself and put myself out there a little bit, um, selfishly would be great for the songwriting career. No doubt. Yeah. Let, so let's talk about this is creepy, but I got to ask you because AI is so popular. Yeah. Now. People, everybody's, raging about yeah yeah and and my son's a screenwriter you know and he he just wrote like seven movies for hallmark you know by himself so i say just did in the last few years but he says you know movies like this yeah it's dangerous you know i mean there's a formula there and, and a machine if if it if you put all the Hallmark movies in there, it can probably spit one yeah, out. You yeah, know? I, I can't. I really got to work at it, yeah. you know? So that's dangerous. Songwriting, I think, I, I personally feel like, well, what's your take on it? 
Um, well, I, and I've been saying this out loud, it's never going to be able to replicate the live show, you know, the live aspect, the human, um, connection that we have in our concerts. Now, it, what's crazy, like I, I was in town writing last month and, uh, one of the guys I was writing with could, could make, like if we wanted the song to be a duet with Kelly Clarkson, mm -hmm. she's been on TV and, and had enough material out there to where he could literally pop her voice on mm -hmm. the female part that we sang in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's already starting. You know, we're getting pitched songs with AI generated. Hey, if you sang this with Kelly, this is what it would sound like. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to writing, I don't, I don't know. There's still going to have to be somebody that has the idea, mm -hmm. you know, and, and coaches it along. I mean, we can, the versions we have right now, you can type it in and, but you can still kind of tell it's that, you know, Atari version of, yeah. <laughs> of the PlayStation right now. Um, we'll see where it goes, but, but I, I, I rest easy knowing what we love and, and yeah. the most is at least I, me and my band is performing live. Yeah. And I don't think there's going to be many robots out there anytime soon that, that can do that. And I'll tell you, to me, where we defeat that is the artist who writes his songs. Mm -hmm. Because what gives you a career, what gives you a career where people really don't just fall in love with a song, but they fall in love with you, especially is knowing that you wrote that song. Yeah. That's, that's why they really love you. I mean, people love artists, and you can. It's not that they don't love George Strait, even though Dean wrote most of those songs. Yeah. He's an exception. Yeah. I think the people, the artists that fans really gravitate to and really put their hooks into and really love, knowing that they wrote that. So when you're on stage singing that song, they connect to that. It's like that came from him. Yeah. You know, co writer or not, that's. You know, that's he wrote that. He fe he really feels he means that. That's not just a good song that we can sing along. Yeah, to, through you know? through the years, um, you know, we we'll, we'll do a, a like a hang before the show on mm -hmm. our tours when mm -hmm. we have time, and I'll, I'll just take requests. And it seems like the common thread since day one on these hangs is the fans want, and they don't even know it, but they want the songs that cut me the most. You know, mm -hmm. um, they don't know they cut me the most, but but based on just the historical of what they want to hear when I go, hey, what songs do you want to hear? It's just me and guitar. Uh -huh. They always request the songs, not the single every time. You know, uh -huh. some of them are, but a lot of the times it's album cuts that we don't play on tour, mm -hmm. um, but are on the album because they mean something to me. Yeah. And there's that connection. You nailed it. There's that connection, whether they know it or not, that it, it came from the guy that they paid, a, you know, paid money to come see that There's that a night. reason for that. Whether it's whether it's on vinyl or whether it's on stage, mm -hmm. that's where your heart's at, man. Yeah, that's what AI can't do. Yeah, that's where the secret is to all those people that go, it can do this. Oh yeah, no, it can't. Nah, I don't believe it. I don't either. Now speaking of fun and games, this thing you did with Jelly Roll Chevrolet. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Thanks what a, for the shout out, by the way. <laughs> absolutely, you're very welcome. What a, what a blessing. Um, this was just this was a god thing with the timing of. Uh -huh. Uh, it, it originated, the connection happened uh, during 20 and 21 when we couldn't tour and just talking amongst ourselves. He was calling my producer, Zach Crowell, and I was calling Zach and we're, man, are we going to make music? You know, what are we doing on social media? How would he keep our fan bases connected? And um, Jelly and Zach go back to when I was in, you know, pretty much grade school and they were really? doing street beats in Nashville. No and, and I knew Jelly Roll, I knew Haystack, all these guys up uh -huh. here making rap music. And, um, Zach was making a lot of their beats. Oh, cool. Then life goes on. He starts making country music, and, and we connect. And um, Jelly put out Save Me, which really took off uh -huh. in 21 and um, kind of got them talking about maybe making country record. Mm -hmm. And then Chevrolet came in, and it was just us being all being in the kitchen cooking at the same time. <laughs> we Little did I know, you know, that Jelly Roll's career would – launch to superstardom this year and <laughs> yeah. here we already have this song in the in the can ah, ready to rock awesome. um but yeah just it's it's one of those moments um you know we, we get to sing the drift away melody with a new lyric uh-huh brought to you by brooks and dunn <laughs> um a six pack of beer in a back road what can yeah. what, what else can i ask for for a career moment man and now i get to talk to you about it that's fun it's pretty epic that's fun and how fun is he 
You know, I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's awesome. I just right off the bat, I'm like, we're bad. We're bad for each other. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you that. Yeah, if if um, if we if we get to each, if we get to hang out with each other past 10 p.m., it's yeah. it's a good old time I and a long imagine. night. There's that intangible. Just I don't know. He's he's just got a great presence about him. He's got a great aura about just a great spirit. I don't know. I can't. You can't really explain it. But but Jelly's one of a kind, man. And you're going to kick your tour off at the Ryman? First headlining show at the Ryman. We played the Ryman a handful of times, uh-huh. you know, with Opry, different charity events. Uh-huh. But proper headlining tour. Um, first time we played the Ryman, we haven't been in Nashville. You know, we've, we've been here supporting others for the last mm-hmm. few years. But we haven't played our, our own uh, show in a, in a while. So I'm excited, man. The Kill the Cowboy Tour, kick off on that stage. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, Broadway before and after. That's the move. Yeah. So what, what, like I'm from Louisiana. We had the Louisiana Hayride. You know, when, when Cash and Hank Sr., um, Elvis, all got kicked off the Opry, they came to Louisiana. They were on the Hayride, you know, because we didn't care. You know, I mean, we were That's at so hell cool. in Louisiana, and it's, it, you know, at that time it was pretty buttoned down at the Opry, and yeah. it still kind of is. Yes, yeah, the buttons on it still. Uh huh. And now you've got a serious Tennessee contingent going in country music now. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, it's like, like the Peach Pickers and the, the whole Georgia thing Georgia was kind of romping there. The I Georgia know. movement, but now there's a big Tennessee movement. Growing yeah. up, was the Opry a thing for it you was. or your family? Yeah. It was. It was on. Uh, I'd like to say it was on TNN, I think, mm-hmm. at that point. Um, man, and then, so the Opry, we had country radio, but then, you know, the Opry was where I could actually see stars mm-hmm. on, on a stage. And, of course, the award shows, tune mm-hmm. in for those. And then they were they were still televising. Uh, there was a stint where they televised some for the Blueberry Cafe. Mm-hmm. Got to start seeing the story behind the songs. And yeah, songwriters, yeah. what the heck's that? You know? <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, that was a, that was a big part of me. Growing up and learning uh, the most I could about uh-huh. Nashville, you know, just being a fan in Tullahoma, Tennessee there. So the Tennessee guys, who you feel closest to? Oh, man. Um, probably Craig Morgan. Yeah? Be clo- Yeah, closest with him. Okay. Got to tour with Chris Young. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually got to tour with Morgan Wallen. Um I guess what other Morgan is there right now? Um, you know, there's there's a couple there's of them out probably there. Probably some more Morgans. <laughs> Not to clarify, Morgan Wallen. Um, you know, he and I we we got to tour um, with uh, Florida Georgia Line. Okay. And uh, had a big old time, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say that's. I'm trying to th- think of who would forget. That was probably Chesney. Chesney would be the one that that I want to tour with. I want to uh-huh. keep putting it out there into the universe. Uh huh. I'm not got to tour Chesney yet, but but he would be um, somebody I think I could learn a lot from. I'm surprised that'd be a good hookup. It would be, yeah. Kenny's a good guy. I, I, I think I'd fall right in with No Nation, uh-huh. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's do it. Um, let's see. Um, so thinking about you, and I know there's that's kind of an old story for you now, probably the way that record Still love came telling about. It. But yeah, uh, and we probably talked about it last time you were you were in because she sort of by happenstance wound up on that record. Yeah. And then... Arguably, maybe your longest at number one record, anyway, huh? Without a doubt, it was. Uh-huh. Yeah, six, seven weeks at number one, and then it goes on to be our, you know, the biggest song of the following year. It was kind of a, even more of a story that following year. Uh-huh. Um, and still, I can I can tell when we come to town. Yeah, is a lot of the reason that that our fans are out there, and that's the moment they're waiting on. Uh huh. No kidding. Yeah, it, it's it's awesome, man. And I'm what a blessing. Um, I you know, two and a half years, about two and a half years from when. I wanted to do that song as a duet and make it a single to when it finally came out, happened, uh-huh. and, and was a big hit for us. So that wow. was a, a lot of belief in that one for me. Yeah. But now looking back, so you got, you know, you're not the new kid on the block anymore. No, sir. a long stretch. You feel probably starting to look at acts coming up and whatever, and I'm not asking you about them. But um, it is kind of, I guess... The question I want to ask, so like people ask me all the time, what's your favorite Brooks and Dunn song? And I and I have to say Red Dirt Road. You know, that's the yeah. one that stuck with me. I think it was a, we wrote that together, but it was a day when we were really actually having a grown man conversation with each other about stuff that mattered to us and where mm-hmm. we came from. Mm-hmm. You know, 
what's that song in your repertoire now that that you would go? That's the one that I sit in a room and play, or the one at a writer's night that I can't wait to do. Um, just because of the story behind it, Cowboys and Angels for me, mm-hmm. which I, I part of me wishes it was a little bit later in my career. Mm-hmm. It was my first single, mm-hmm. um, but but still getting to talk about it. Uh, you know, you mentioned writers round or a moment in the show. Um, it's the time in our show where I can kind of bring it down and get real, mm-hmm. you know, and, and talk about what matters to me and what I've learned mm-hmm. from my grandma and granddad, which is who that song was written for and about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the first time I felt like as a songwriter in Nashville, I had something mm-hmm. just deep down in my gut. And I'll never forget when I felt it, where I was, when I felt it. And, uh, Man, if I could, if I could remember, if I could have remembered that every time, you know, because <laughs> life goes on and you you forget to trust that that feeling, even yeah. though you may have it, you get outside influence. But yeah. since then, I, I've I've had that feeling, you know. You, we talked about thinking about you and and same kind of thing. It was like there's something here that uh-huh. just moves me in a different way. But Cowboys and Angels is it, and it taught me that song taught taught me and still teaches me. Um what music can mean to people, man. Just the the stories that I'm still getting to hear and meet and greets. We're a decade into this thing. Mm -hmm. And guys and girls are still waiting on us to come to town, still hoping to get a chance to say hello and thank us or share their story on how that song became a part of their life and Mm -hmm. what it did for them. Mm -hmm. That's just so powerful. Yeah, Um, I've I've had bigger hit songs, a handful of them. Um, But for whatever reason, that's the one that still feels like the glue. Um you know, for, for our fans out there. Mm-hmm. You know, that hit is only as big as you want it to be. Yeah. You know, and it can be your biggest win. Probably when you bring it to the stage, it may be. Yeah. I remember a DJ told Ronnie and I, brand new man, we, <laughs> we had just gone number one and, and we were feeling pretty good about, we, we got a number one, you know, we, we assumed that was probably the end of our career. And this DJ goes, well, boys, how's it feel to have your career record as your first single? <laughs> and we looked at each other and went, so that's it, huh? <laughs> we really are done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it feels pretty good, honestly, you know. But, yeah, it's it's neat that you can look back and, man, there's time gives you confidence if you're still here. For sure. And I think that's why I'm having so much fun making mm-hmm. making music and, and excited to go tour, you know, this new music right. we've got coming. Is it's just becoming comfortable in, in my own skin mm-hmm. and, and what I have to say and realizing that what I'm experiencing and feeling as a writer and as an artist, people are relating to and can relate to, even though it's sometimes scary as hell to put out there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what's fun, embracing that. And, um, man, I don't know. I still love chasing down song ideas. <laughs> it's the best. Me too. What's the hardest part about dating? Right now it's um, – I'm I'm just I will say like if I'm self diagnosing myself I, I love I'm selfish right now with my time mm-hmm. um, I'm scared to have to give up some freedom of off days mm-hmm. you know maybe that I'm uh, not going to be available enough for somebody to really make something work mm-hmm. and I still don't know if I'm there you know I don't know mm-hmm. if I need to like stop touring for a while and really slow down and get whatever I'm missing vacation wise out of my out of my head, um, <laughs> but but I, I keep I keep it fit, you know full. I keep busy, you know. I'm I'm chasing down my next license as a pilot. Um, I'm learning how to farm and growing my farm, that whole operation on top mm-hmm. of a music career, and I'm um, trying to be there and present for my niece and nephew as much as possible. So cool. my plate's full right now, and I'm yeah. happy and and I'm whole. I, I've never been a serial dater where yeah. I like have to have somebody. Mm-hmm. But man, I kind of miss the holidays without somebody, and I had, mm-hmm. I miss you know I, having a girlfriend in the past and getting to dress up for award shows and go to mm-hmm. those events. It's a lot more fun going to prom with a date. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you seem happy. I am. I don't, happy. I don't ever yeah. hear you whining. Take Reba. Oh, she's got a boyfriend. Dang now. it, Reba. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you, sir. I'm pulling for you. Thank you so Always. much. Always. Thank and you. Keep up the good work, man. I can't. Can't wait to. I know you. You got a new album, but uh, to really dig into it. Yeah. And um and love the single. Thank you. The video's cool. Yeah. It's pretty rock star stuff on yeah. the. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. On the video, yeah. A lot of fun. Did it? 
um, was it different kind of getting down in one? You seem like you're trying to find your your dark dust in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun for sure. Um, no, I'm, I'm just enjoying enjoying the ride. And, um, yeah, we I was I was pumped. The team, I thought, made a really cool, interesting take on it. Yeah. I mean, hell, that was easy for me. I just stood there and sang 100 times. Yeah. No, that, it's, those it's, boys made the magic of all the visuals. Oh, that's a neat record, too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Good deal. Thanks. All right. Well, good luck. With Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me in. Thanks for being Thanks here. For- American country countdown.